Flashforge was nice enough to send me their new Aventurer 5M Pro 3D printer. And the box is a little ripped up from shipping, along with it having a hole in the side that I can actually see the printer through. And luckily it looks like it just hit the side of the machine and made a little scratch. So nothing really to worry about. And when it comes to the rest of the printer, it looks like everything is unharmed. And there's a decent amount of protective film over all the clear parts of this that we're going to need to take off. And if we open up the top hatch on this, you can see that it's filled with foam. And underneath that first layer of foam, there's a box full of parts, along with a small roll of filament. And it's probably only about 250 grams. And this foam goes all the way down to the bottom of the machine. So let me get that out real quick. And there we go, everything's all out of here and we can get a better look at the inside of the machine. This does have a double-sided textured magnetic build plate. And it has a print volume of 220 by 220 by 220. And if we look at the side of the machine, there's a large auxiliary cooling fan, which is going to help with cooling when printing at these higher speeds. But before we can even use this printer, you do have to remove four screws that are holding this down. On the the back of the machine you can see two vents that actually have filters in them and this should filter out a lot of the smells from 3d printing and if you follow the wiring from the back to the front you'll find a camera and this will allow you to check on your prints and it can also record its own time lapse and according to the flashforge website this printer has a max speed of 600 millimeters per second but realistically you're going to be printing around 300 millimeters per second this is a direct drive setup that uses a bowden tube as a guide and this just kind of plugs into the top and you can actually remove the front part of the print head so you can see everything inside and this does have an interesting nozzle and hot end design Design that can be completely removed without any tools. And as you can see, this whole unit is just one piece that comes out. And the machine came with a 0.4 nozzle installed, but it also came with a 0.6 setup. It also came with a small box of tools to assemble and run the printer. And if we come to the back of the printer, you can see some access holes for tensioning your belts, along with the spot that we're going to be mounting our spool holder, which just goes on with two screws. And I'm just going to load up the filament that came with the machine. And it's as easy as just putting this on here and feeding it through the Bowden tube until it hits the extruder. I am kind of disappointed that they decided to put this on the back of the machine, seeing that it's an absolute pain to get to a lot of the time, and I really think they should have just stuck with the side mounting setup they had on the Adventure 4, which I think is a much better setup, even if it was just open and they didn't have the door like this one has. But anyways, let's get this thing turned on for the first time. It does have a power supply switch on the back, but to actually turn on and off the machine, you are going to use the front button. And the setup is surprisingly simple, just pick your language, and then it's going to run through its own setup process. And this will have it going through and probing the bed to make sure everything's going to be level, and doing input shaping so it can compensate for how fast it moves. And this whole process only took about 9 minutes, and then it prompts you to load in some filament. And it was nice to see that the hot end got up to temp in only 45 seconds. And it did start purging its own filament to make sure everything was going to come out, but it does a little too much in my opinion. But with that done, it's going to start up its own first print, which is just a cube, basically, to make sure things are working properly. And it looks like the first layer went down fine, and it was able to print this with no problem. And it's not a terribly long print, it only took 6 minutes to finish this. And overall, it looks like it came out pretty good, with with no glaring issues. So let's try out something else, and this printer has internal storage with some files already on it, which for some reason in the thumbnails are all really pixelated. But let's start one and see what happens anyways. One thing that I wanted to point out that actually surprised me was the movement speed of the bed. This isn't sped up or anything, it just moves really quick compared to other printers. And when it comes to the actual printing speed of this printer, here it is moving around in real time. And it's definitely not going to break any records, but it's definitely not a slow printer. It's also not the quietest printer in the world when it's completely open, but if you close it up you can definitely hear a difference. And here's our finished print. It looks like it came out with no problems. And it definitely looks pretty interesting in this burnt titanium filament. You're also able to put your own files onto here using a USB drive. And once you load them onto print, you can actually remove this and it'll keep going because it'll save the file to internal memory. And of course, I printed a Benchy as well. That came out looking pretty good. But everything I've been printing has been in PLA. And this is a fully enclosed printer. And I definitely wanted to check it out with my thermal camera. And you can see that it's holding a lot of heat inside. And this doesn't have an active heater inside of it. So everything is just passively heated from the elements inside of it. And this makes it perfect for printing ABS and ASA without it warping. And yeah, it's definitely able to do that, seeing that this is ASA. And this came out with some really nice layer lines, but it did have one spot on the bottom that wasn't sticking to the bed. And this was just a start to a major bed adhesion problem that I was having for a while. And as you can see, I've printed quite a few test prints to see what was going on. And you can see the first layer on this is not tight enough to the bed, and the Z offset it was just way off, but only in certain areas. And then I noticed when I was removing a test print one time that the bed looked a little weird. And it's because because it was lifting up the magnet. And as you can see, if I pull up on this, I can actually remove the entire sticky magnet that's supposed to be holding the bed down. So I contacted Flashforge and they sent me a replacement magnetic sheet that seemed to fix this problem completely. And I was finally able to get a good print of this. That being said, I still had a failure when I was printing ABS, but this was more or less my fault because the bottom half of this pumpkin had a very small connecting surface and I didn't add any type of brim to it. And here's my failed print, which I don't believe this machine has capability of detecting, but here's our successful one. And definitely not a bad print for ABS. 
this. And this is actually designed so you can put a fake candle inside of it. And seeing that I made this video around Halloween, this is pretty fitting. And it definitely looks pretty good in the dark. I was also able to print this with no problems, which is definitely an interesting design seeing that these little strings are holding everything in place. And it just prints laying down and then all the strings are just bridging. And since I had everything printing properly now, I was able to switch back and forth with no problem between ABS and PLA. Like this print in place compliant mechanism Nerf gun. And as you can see, this looks pretty good. And if you pull this back and pull the trigger, it'll fire. I was also able to print this funnel with no problem in an ABS. And I'm actually surprised this didn't fail, seeing that it has such a small contact area with the bed. And if you watched my last video about the new Revel Point 3D scanner, I designed a better turntable for it and printed it on this printer. And the flash drive that came with this came with two different slicer softwares, Flash Print and Orca Slicer. And what you're seeing right now is a Flash Print Slicer, which is mostly because you can only send files over Wi-Fi using their slicer, which I feel like is a giant misstep. And they should really open this up so you can actually use Orca Slicer over Wi-Fi so you can actually monitor your prints using the camera, along with just being able to send files over. Because as it is, the only way you can use Orca Slicer is to upload your files to a flash drive and plug it into your machine directly. But overall, this is a pretty good printer, even with these small cons and limitations. And in my opinion, it's totally worth the price tag of $600. But if you're not planning on printing anything like ABS or ASA, and you don't really need a fully enclosed machine, then you might want to check out their non-pro version, which is only $400. And it pretty much has the same exact specs as the Pro, besides it doesn't have the enclosure or a camera. Oh, and if you're looking for a replacement build plates or just different kinds, you can get them, and they're relatively cheap. And they're pretty easy to get, seeing that they're the same size as the Ender 3. And I'll make sure to have links to this in the description below, along with everything else I use in this video. Well, I think that sums up everything about this printer. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And let me know what you think of this printer versus the other ones on the market that are very similar to it. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.